hi guys dr rahul this side and today i will be yes yeah so today i will be discussing with you about uh, your radiology subject right so without further delay we will start right so what all we'll be discussing here we'll be discussing all the important points okay next we'll be discussing uh, i will make some schematic diagrams for you so that in my next session when i will discuss ibqs so you can uh, lead to the schematic diagrams and you can grasp it easily right so this two i'll be taking today okay so we will start right so <clears throat> first i will start with radiation units important topic has been asked so conventional unit and si unit okay so first is radiation see radiation exposure make a table and remember it's easy so first is radiation exposure so conventional unit is rho and chain the person who discovered radiology correct so rho and chain he discovered x-ray father of radiology we say like and si unit is coulomb per kg coulomb per kg okay conventional si i am continuing the table guys so then it is absorbed dose so just remember absorbed dose there is a d so it will be red okay and gray right and then absorbed dose equivalent so just remember the equivalent so here it will be radiation uh, radiation equivalent in conventional in the si it is sievert okay and the final one is radioactivity radioactivity in conventional unit it will be curie right conventional is curie and in si it is bicarbonate find a way to remember important right now now i will be going towards some you know this one um, some one liner points ct scan principle so principle of ct scan is mainly the multiple projections right just remember the what i am saying multiple projections okay chalo then uh, there was a question like x ray uh, x ray gamma ray and alpha which one is the highest ionizing and the highest penetration so guys remember with uh, first the x ray then gamma then alpha the ionizing power is increasing right ionizing power increases in this direction so this is the increasing ionizing power or the damaging power as we can say and the reverse means alpha gamma and x take okay, a reverse is the increasing penetration of it uh actually gamma will be here in case of reverse penetration alpha x and gamma take okay, gamma is the highest penetration okay so rectify it right this is not reverse uh yeah so in this direction x gamma and alpha this is the ionizing power will increase alpha with the highest ionizing power right and penetration penetration power alpha x and gamma gamma is the highest penetration power okay chalo and also remember the non ionizing radiation non ionizing what are this mri usg and thermography these two important usg mri and thermography now mri i will discuss it here only mri uses the uh, gyromagnetic property gyromagnetic property of hydrogen nucleus just remember it right so gyromagnetic property of hydrogen nucleus and usg uses piezoelectric effect 
and uh, what is the die uh, you know uh, what they say uh, what is used in usg it is lead zirconate titanate let me write it another page so usg you will see piezoelectric effect piezoelectric effect right and lead zirconate titanate is used titanate remember this one right it has been asked okay and then uh, what i will discuss yes remember with proton proton shows bragg effect bragg effect means all the you know uh, what to say all the all the energy is deposited in one point like there will be a sudden peak this one is the bragg point okay it's going like this going to sudden this is all this will be deposited at one point right so this is bragg effect shown by proton chalo next <clears throat> okay so next we will see yes so just remember one dictum that x rays are produced when electron beam strikes anode then only x rays are produced okay so x rays are produced when when the electron beam strike anode this is important correct and this anode while producing the x ray because electron will strike the anode and will generate x rays okay now there will be two reactions one is bram starling reaction bram starling reaction and another is okay there will be two reactions bram strong reaction okay bram strong reaction at and another is characteristic radiation characteristic radiation right and with this i will go to uh this one the majority of the bramstrong you know 70 to 80% majority and um, uh, this one a uh, characteristic is only 20 to 30% but characteristic is important in mammography very important and mammography there are two views one is oblique another is mediolateral okay there are two views just remember it right sorry okay so next yes next i will uh, discuss about two things one is kvp and there is mass see kvp is just remember this one kvp directly proportional to penetration and inversely proportional to contrast like a formula type okay so to improve the contrast we will decrease the kvp right so kvp is direct proportional to penetration inversely proportional to contrast correct and mass is just reverse direct proportional to contrast so remember this two two points okay has been asked kvp direct proportional to penetration inversely proportional to contrast mass yes kvp is directly proportional to penetration inversely proportional to contrast and mass is directly proportional to contrast okay okay now yes i will talk about mammography now this is important so mammography your target is molybdenum okay every word is important guys whatever i will be uttering every word is important target is molybdenum and reaction i just now mentioned in mammography it is characteristic radiation no doubt about that right characteristic radiation and when you uh, you uh, when you apart from this when it is age is more than 40 you screen it correct for less than 40 years female we use mri because they have a dense breast so their mammography is not useful 
for age more than 40 we will do mammography okay okay now few few important things like uh, for pregnant and lactating women usg is the modality of choice for looking the breast right and for again for breast implant we look the mri correct so, and how will you distinguish between benign versus malignant see malignant the thing is there will be irregular you know speculated and micro calcification okay and benign there will be macro calcification as we see in fibroadenoma yep, we see, see the, we say this as popcorn calcification right so benign popcorn calcification fibroadenoma macro calcification macro right macro calcification is benign but no with malignant you will see these like things in a micro and so many not, not like things right so this is micro calcification and irregular speculed edges right so this is malignant correct okay now we will see about the bi rate score it is, it is also important bi rate score so bi rate scoring just remember scoring goes like this six right so zero is incomplete zero is incomplete one is normal okay one is normal correct and two is benign what is asked is with these two one and two we will do routine screening we will do routine screening okay one is normal two is benign and with these two routine screening is performed and uh, three is probably benign four is suspicious five is highly suspicious and six is proven malignancy okay so in case of four and five we need to carry out biopsy because it is suspicious and highly suspicious four is suspicious five is highly suspicious carry out biopsy three is probably benign so follow up three to six months is also important similar scoring is there as pirates for prostate pirates is for breast breast carcinoma pirates for prostate carcinoma okay so zero and one zero is incomplete we have repeated one is normal okay two is benign so one year follow up okay three is probably benign so three to six months follow up four is suspicious five highly suspicious so in these two cases biopsy important and six is proven already malignancy proven right so understood it correct so yeah usg i already discussed the important points so just remember one thing that in case of usg air is the enemy and fluid is friend why and this is the purpose why we can see fluid diffusion this pericardial diffusion this fast the concept of fast is already important in usg you can detect fluid very easily very fast in usg then i will say something about uh, yes i will say about a uh, few stones and what are the investigation of choice for the detection like if you say gallbladder stone is a yes okay so if you say gallbladder stone so here my preferred investigation should be usg if you say cbd stone i will say the preferred is mrcp and if you say kidney stone or ureter stone I will say do NCCT very important this this table is very important and you can expect something from here GB stones gallbladder stones USG CBD stones MRCP and kidney stones your ureter stones NCCT right in case of uh, NCCT you will see posterior acoustic shadowing it means if this is the stone you can see something like this okay anyway chal. Now CT scan is important. Uh, so the unit is Hounsfield unit, uh, given under the name of Godfrey Hound Hounsfield. So just remember few values that plus thousand is for cortical bone. Okay, plus thousand for cortical bone. Minus thousand is for air. Minus hundred is for fat. Okay zero is for 
water and plus 100 is for acute hematoma just remember the plus 1000 for cortical wound minus 1000 for air minus 100 for fat zero for water plus 100 for acute hematoma okay? just remember these values in hrct next so hrct c uh, in case of ct how will you identify the bone will be white bone is white in ct correct now see ct hrct has gained importance means uh, much importance in the co covid era because in covid patients you will see uh, peripheral areas of ground glass opacification now how will you see the ground see this is if uh, in city you will see sections correct so in this in these two, two lungs you will see ground glass opacifications mainly means like this you know pavement type or ground glass opacifications take okay? you know like this so. and yes so i will summarize the things like ct when will you do ncct and when will you do cct see ncct will be done in case of see acute hemorrhage or brain hematoma right edh tdh like edh sdh like head trauma you will do ncct then cortical bone for any cortical bone okay or any uh, cortical bone calcul calcifications or any calculus you know or then uh, brain hemorrhage and when will you do CCT in case of tumor staging, lymph node staging, abdomen abscess, trauma, right? We will do. Now, uh, I will add a concept of first here. First is for the full form has been asked. Focused assessment. Focused assessment for sonography. Okay. In trauma. Remember this guys, right? Focused assessment for sonography in trauma. Okay. Now, previously when first was not there, you used to perform DPL, right, peritoneal leverage. We will discuss it in surgery, this is no, you know, we should not discuss it here. So, because it's a rapid session, so yes. So for first, when the patient is unstable, if a trauma patient is unstable, we will go for first. If he is stable, we will go for CCT, okay. If he is stable, we will go for CCT. If he is unstable, we will go for fast. And in fast, if we see, say, uh, oh yes, uh, first is that uh, which areas we will look for, right? This has been asked also. So first, see, first we will start with left hypochondrium. So if it is left, it is right. So it's umbilicus. So left hypochondrium first, right hypochondrium, okay? Left hypochondrium, right hypochondrium, okay? Then we will look for epigastrium then right hypogon uh, right this one one second yes, this is umbilicus so first we will go for left hypogondrium okay left right left hypogondrium right hypogondrium epigastrium okay and hypogastrium all right left hypogondrium right hypogondrium epigastrium hypogastrium these are the four areas right we will look for but something is there known as extended first so in these two areas will in uh, will be included this is the right thorax and left thorax is only for extended first don't forget it guys when the patient is unstable go, we will go for first and if he is stable we go for CCT, CCT abdominal like that, right? Okay. No MRI. Already I told that uh, it works on hydro gyromagnetic property of hydrogen nucleus and unit is Tesla. Tesla is the unit. Okay. And yes, MRI very important point. T1 weighted MRI and T2 weighted MRI. Now this has not been asked, but you have to recognize it in the pictures, right? It has a possibility of asking because uh, the pattern of exam is going towards the more towards the uh, clinical side. So you know it has the propensity of uh, getting asked, right? So T1 weighted MRI and T2 weighted MRI. So just remember T2 
and rest remember H2O. Why? Because C. Let me change it. Yes. Water is bright in T2. Just remember this one. Right? Water is bright in T2. And rest is just opposite. Okay. Here water is bright. Here water is black. Simple. So if you just remember this, this is okay, uh, this is okay right? So water is bright on T2. H2 or T2. Water is bright on T2. This I think you will remember. Correct? Okay. And the question that was asked is uh, regarding fat. See, fat is bright or hyper in both T1 and T2. In both T1 and T2, which is MRI, fat is bright. Because we have to detect uh, any hemorrhage and fat in earlier uh, with the flare method, so I will not go in details. So fat has to be bright, right? And one important question is MRI contraindication. So yes. MRI contraindication means in which all conditions MRI is in which all uh, you know situations MRI is contraindicated. See when there is foreign body, when there is foreign body inside eye or inside body, or there is cardiac implants, cardiac implants, cochlear implants, any magnetic device, magnetic device, cochlear implants, or any aneurysmal clips, you should not do MRI in that case. So those who are having claustrophobia should not do it right or in case of pregnancy because you know uh, there may be an, a panic attack for uh, because you have to go inside the machine right so in such, such these are relative indications and first uh, the, the the things which i uh, discussed in the earlier slide this is you know absolute contraindication right okay so yes uh, radiation units we just discussed so now now regarding radiation in pregnant females how much is allowed right so actually it is 50 msb millisievert per year in pregnancy the allowed is 5 millisievert per term up to this much is allowed say a pregnant female received one x-ray radiation so we will say that uh, okay fine you don't have to worry because 5 millisievert right because the patient received 5 millisievert only correct so this will not affect her because uh, according to ARAB guidelines 5 to 15 red or uh, less than 5 is okay we don't have to worry at all correct And in case of X-ray, the exposure is only 0 0.02 MSB. So it is very less because, you know, we can go till less than 5 MSB. So it is 0 0.02. So it is less. So we don't have to worry in such case. And there is a also radiation safety, you know, principle, which is known as Alara principle. is as low as reasonably acceptable. The full form. Correct. Just remember. By chance, he passed. Okay. So, for uh, health personnel, something is given known as TLD badges, thermoluminescent dosimeter badges, right? Thermoluminescent dosimeter badges for monitoring the radiation exposed to them. Okay. Thermoluminescent dosimeter badges. Okay, so yes, now I will uh, mention some contrast agents. So in USG, I already mentioned it is lead, zirconate, titanate, right? Already mentioned, and in MRI is gadolinium. You know this by now. Gadolinium is the contrast. Now, gadolinium has a side effect which has been asked. It is nephrogenic 
systemic fibrosis correct gadolinium side effect nephrogenic systemic fibrosis has been asked correct these are you know sure shot points don't miss and usg there are other contrast okay uh, this lead zirconate titanate is uh, not a contrast right this is the agent used the contrast in usg is levovist and sonoview okay right okay now i will uh, discuss about some iodine contrast this is important this is very important very important topic fishtar topic and along with it i will also discuss contrast induced nephropathy along with it so see iodinated contrast one is uh, iodinated contrast okay so one is ionic one is non ionic correct and you can divide it monomer dimer monomer dimer now see i can tell you the osmolarity this 3 is to 2 6 is to 2 3 is to 1 6 is to 1 but the thing is uh, you don't uh, you don't have to remember these things just remember osmolarity will decrease in this uh, this way in as my arrow is going now in this pattern osmolarity will decrease and if osmolarity decreases it is safe so the lowest will be non ionic dimers so it is the safest of all of these ionic monomers has the highest osmolarity because the more the osmolarity more it will affect your kidneys right so it is dangerous and less the osmolarity more it will be safe so this is the highest osmolarity followed by this followed by this so non ionic dimers has the lowest osmolarity and the reason this is the reason why these are most costly okay so i will give examples like ionic monomers is graphene you know gastrographenes these are not used now ionic dimers are ioxalate ioxalate i, uh, I repeat ioxalate correct non ionic monomers iohexol this is used why this is used because this is uh, less costlier than this one uh, non ionic dimers non ionic dimers are iodexanol which is you know tremendously costly okay now i will discuss contrast induced nephropathy now what is the diagnostic criteria has been asked okay so when serum creatinine is 25% or more than 0.5 mg per deciliter one criteria number two criteria yes within it should be within 48 to 72 hours of giving contrast so serum creatinine 25 percent or uh, 0.5 mg per deciliter within 48 or 72 hours after giving the contrast right so cin treatment simple hemodialysis you will remove the contrast right with hemodialysis and markers of course creatinine no doubt about that creatinine or egfr creatinine is important or egfr uh, see less than 60 ml per minute per 1.73 meters square or others are serum cystatine or angel okay but this one is more important creatinine you have to you know see the creatinine values and how will you prevent it how will you prevent the prevention is simple you will uh, pre contrast you will hydrate the patient okay you will give you will hydrate the patient you will do rft before giving the contrast it is important then uh, after doing rft you will see the creatinine see the creatinine is already low there is no point of giving the contrast uh, particularly the contrast with high osmolarity that will affect the kidneys right so rft is important then you can you will give an ac tile cysteine okay this we will give after the contrast if uh, you know uh, may may be given as an antidote purpose but it is not that helpful but still it is given right statins you can give metformin bicarbonate bicarb can be given and acetylcysteine can be given correct in many literatures i found that an acetylcysteine is uh, uh, not that helpful but better to give right it is used in uh, many institutes all right so i discussed about an important uh, topic let's go to next let's see what's in the list next
okay mm. okay yes so next is we will study about barium okay we will quickly go through barium studies see mm. where to go from okay so okay i will tell the dyes right see small bowel obstruction first i will discuss about what is small bowel obstruction this is important right see how will you uh how will you diagnose from an x-ray that is small bowel or large bowel see the important thing is that uh say this is abdomen large bowel is in the large bowel will be in the periphery okay and there will be this ostrations in large bowel we will see ostrations on the contrary in the small bowel will be in the center okay so large bowel is in the periphery we will see ostrations small bowel is in the center mainly jejunum ileum these things right and in the jejunum part you will see this this type of patterns right like this like this right this is called you know if i show it in bigger picture it will be something like this is called valvule coniventis valvule coniventis this is the characteristics of small bowel and large bowel this is small bowel this is large bowel right? large bowel is large bowel is in the periphery with ostracians small bowel in center with valvule coniventis now uh, okay let's rub it yes now we will talk about the obstruction segment okay I will identify this obstruction or something. So obstruction means air fluid levels more than six. Air fluid levels. How will you identify? It will be something like this, right? Air fluid levels. So see if this type of things is there in the periphery, then this large bowel obstruction. If it is in the center, it is small bowel obstructions. Okay, small bowel obstruction. Okay, simple. If it is in the center, small bowel. In the periphery, large bowel. Okay. Uh, so what i was discussing yes so what is the dye you will give in small bowel obstruction gastrographin in this case it is preferred but uh, don't give anywhere else right because it is just now we uh, saw that it is uh, highest osmolarity and then uh, barium c Yes, we are studying about barium. So barium contraindicated. So why will will you not prefer barium? So in case of small bowel obstruction, you will not prefer barium. You should give gastrographin or any ionic dye. Again, you should not give it in any intestinal perforation because in case of any leak, there will be peritonitis. So we don't want peritonitis in a patient for any contrast. So in case of leak, no barium. No barium in leak. In that case, what we prefer? We prefer ioexol it's better right and tracheoesophageal fistula again it is a contraindication for barium but in this case you can grip same iohexol so I, I, iohexol is the only diet that is used in many cases again in myelography you can use iohexol just keep in mind right N not that important okay now i will uh, renal function assessment Right, just remember three points. One is MAC3. See, MAC3 is for renal function assessment. Take it. DTPA is for GFR estimation. And DEMSA. DEMSA is for anatomy or scar detection. You know, anatomy or scar detection of kidneys. Right, just remember these three points. One has been already asked, this one. And I'm expecting this one. To be the next this and this is very important demsa is for anatomy of sky of kidneys mac3 is for renal function assessment dtp is for gfr okay Chalo. and i will uh, also discuss something about pet scan this is also important pet scan full form positron emission tomography right see <clears throat> so here what is used that has been asked 18 chlorodeoxy glucose 18 fdg whose half life is 110 minute okay so actually uh, normal high values normally high values are seen in brown fat has been asked 
its normality is high because if uh, in brown fat the 18 fbg gets deposited this is a derivative of glucose only 18 fluorodeoxy glucose so brown fat takes up this 18 fbg so normality is high in uh, brown fat and brain okay but uh, some some tumors will take it and some will not take it right so that that is important the carcinoma not showing activity because by that you will detect those carcinomas this has been asked carcinoma not showing any activity in pet two carcinomas mainly typical carcinoid and bronchoalveolar carcinoma back right okay and then then we will go to neuro section right i will i will like to discuss something from neuro part and i will show the images in my another session so that you can easily catch those images okay but before going there to that i will uh, like to add one table agent versus diseases right so this is important this has been asked system ev scan for parathyroid adenoma i hope by the time you know this guys system ev scan is for parathyroid adenoma correct Eta scan is for biliary atresia. If you cannot see this gallbladder, that means it is acute cholestasis. Anyway, so just remember Eta scan for biliary atresia. MDP is for bone scan, right? And then octreotide scan is for FIO. Thallium scan for MI. Okay, that's important. Now I am regarding some anatomy. Correct. So if I take this section of the brain and I am making it half, correct? I will show you the image. Don't worry. Okay, <clears throat> so just remember this one is the caudate nucleus, right? This one is the caudate nucleus. Okay, this is uh, in both sides, all right? So do, don't confuse that this is on the one side or thing like that. Nothing like that is on the present on the both side. I am showing on the one side. This one I marked is the caudate nucleus, right? Next, this one, of course, you know, this is lentiform nucleus. Caudate nucleus medially, lentiform nucleus laterally. Here it is globus pallidus plus putamen. Any bleed there means putamen bleed. Putamen is the most common site of hypertensive bleed has been asked. So they will show some bleed in this portion and they will say what it is, is putamen bleed, hypertensive bleed. Correct. This is your thalamus. Right. Now medially caudate nucleus and thalamus laterally lentiform nucleus. In between what? In between you know yes correct. Very good. In between it is internal capsule. Correct. This is your anterior limb, middle genu, and posterior limb. Okay. So you have to identify this in image. We'll do that. Nothing to worry. Again, in CCD section, there is given something like that, right? Something like this, and 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 it's like this. So this image is showing that there is a pulmonary thromboembolism. I will mark uh, mark for you. So is the understanding? This is ascending aorta. This is descending outer. This is your pulmonary artery, and this is the thrombus, right? So it's pulmonary thromboembolism, very important. And in case you see a flap in the ascending outer or descending outer, what is this? Aortic aneurysm. This type of flap will you, you will see, and the largest flap is the true lumen, right? Anyway, so next. Uh, next, what we'll discuss. Let's discuss something about pregnancy related something. Okay. So cardiac activity seen at six weeks. Don't confuse here, right? Date scan done at six weeks. Correct. Earliest abnormality to be detected is at 8 to 10 weeks and what is that anencephaly how it looks like 
something like that frog eye face or frog face like you can say that and then cephal is the earliest one at 8 to 10 weeks it can be identified earliest abnormality to be identified then something known as nuchal scan nuchal scan we will discuss the details at obg right so nuchal scan for diagnosing downs at 11 to 14 weeks when we will say it is downs when it is more than 3 centimeter nuchal scan is something like this okay and we measure this this part okay when it is more than 3 centimeter we say that it's a downs i will show you the image right don't worry structural abnormality 18 to 20 weeks because by this time the organs and everything starts to grow right <coughs> And growth scan done by 32 to sorry 28 to 32 weeks. Okay. Okay. Then something is important in MRI. We can see linguine sign. Linguine sign means in MRI you can see something like this and something floating like this. This is because of intracapsular. Breast implant rupture. This is an MRI, correct? And it seems same thing if you see on USG, it will give snowstorm appearance. Alright. There is another snowstorm. I would like to discuss it here only. There is another snowstorm, something seen like this in H mole. And again, if you see a pattern, let me show uh, how to show you. Um, okay. The if if you see a pattern like this, okay, exactly like this, this is pearls necklace and see necklace pattern no pearls necklace in pcod but again similar similar thing if you see like this and there's a history that patient is uh, patient is undergone ovulation means uh, ovulation drugs or beta hcg there's a history there'll be history of beta hcg you know intake because of an ovulation so this is ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome ohss this is PCOT and also remember that in Rotterdam's criteria pulse necklace is not there sometimes it is important to know what is there what is not there so in Rotterdam's criteria there is no pulse necklace uh, criteria rest all criteria we will see in OBG right okay then we will see T sign T sign in monochorionic diamniotic what happens in there i will discuss and then we can see lambda sign lambda sign in dichorionic pregnancy see monochorionic diametric means there is two amnion but chorion is one okay and the thin membrane so it occurs like t-shape see t-shape no two amnion one chorion t-shape this membrane is thin not not so thick right don't don't think that it is a thick membrane of course not it is a thin membrane I will draw for you again like this, like this, like this. Simple. And if you say lambda sign dichorionic, now there are two chorion, the two amnion. This this is a huge thick membrane between the two amnion. This shows us the lambda sign, right? Details we will see in this one. OBG. Now radiotherapy. Important points. One is photoelectric effect, one is Compton effect. Correct? Now I will tell the difference that photoelectric effect, photoelectric effect, it is the interaction with the innermost electron. Innermost electron. Remember it, innermost, and that one is the outermost. It is a low energy, it is free, uh, Free electrons, right? This is low energy. Now, this Compton is used for therapies. Okay. And we will maximize the photoelectric effect for our benefits. And Compton we will minimize. Just remember this one. This is a little confusing, but I did not see that in exams, but okay, may be asked, right? Just for completion sake, I mentioned. Now there is important uh, two things: teletherapy and brachytherapy. Brachy means close. Brachy means close, 
and tele means from a distance ठीक है teletherapy is intraoperative radiotherapy given in prostate then linac these examples has been asked brachytherapy uh, brachytherapy is given close to cavity right close to cavity example type forgot i will say you once i remember right not uh, i'm not able to uh, recollect it now so brachytherapy is given to close to any cavity say say any uh, you know to any tumors in you know uh, any cavity so there will use a brachytherapy correct okay chalo mm, next so next i will discuss about radio sensitivity radio sensitivity right most radio sensitive has been asked if you talk about organs obviously ovary and testis no doubt about that if i say least vagina then bone then cns maximum is vagina if i say tissue most tissue most radio sensitive is bone marrow hematopoietic changes will be there and if i say list a list is nerve okay shall once more guys yes now if i if i say cell blood is blood i have not seen anyway i will discuss with you so in cell most radio sensitive and least radio sensitive most if i say is g to m phase and least if i say is s phase the dna synthesis phase this is least affected right and if i say about uh, next page blood most if i say it is lymphocyte least is platelet of course you know that correct now the important thing where the uh, questions are asked tumors which are highly sensitive and least sensitive highly sensitive tumors are wins tumor having's means they are responsive good response lymphoma seminoma myeloma wins having's lymphoma seminoma myeloma don't forget this guys and least is hepatoma osteosarcoma pancreatic carcinoma melanoma no use of therapy at all okay so next i will uh, say about mr spectroscopy often asked so ju just remember few points see they will give a graph and they will name the some of the markers and they will say they will say na and you are seeing an na peak so in what all conditions this peak we will see so na means n acetyl aspartate right it is increased in canavans disease don't forget it canavans disease choline in which all conditions choline will increase choline increase in cancer correct creatinine is a reference marker and lactate yes lactate is also important lactate will increase in tuberculoma tuberculoma or neurocystisarcosis chalo next now we will discuss about some i will show the images at the last right few images now we will discuss about the head trauma see edh this is a edh right this i am discussing about edh so it is a you know biconvex lens pattern and the art is arterial bleed, uh, remember middle meningeal artery arterial bleed edh lens pattern okay and side by side also remember the sdh sdh is like this right so this is your sdh right so sdh is a venous bleed cortical bridging veins involved right and also um, you can see if such type of bleed is there this is sh now sh will have a history like sh will have a history like sudden excruciating you know throbbing headache then most common cause is trauma only and in case it is not trauma then the most common cause is berry aneurysm rupture berry aneurysm rupture talking about hematoma 
hematoma we have got acute subacute and chronic okay so we are discussing about hematoma right let me check once yes hematoma so hematoma there is one question came like acute hematoma so acute hematoma will be hyper dense remember this hyper dense acute hematoma will be hyper dense subacute will be isodense correct and chronic will be hypodense remember these terms right hyperdense means white right so acute hematoma will be hyperdense subacute isodense chronic hypodense okay remember this right is important has been asked another important topic is diffuse axonal injury see in diffuse axonal injury the ct there is no point of doing cts because cts will be normal so if you do serial ct everything will be normal actually there is a uh, it, it happens in rta first of all mostly rta can happen in other injuries as well there is a shearing stress between gray and white matter there will be a shearing stress force right so in ct you cannot evaluate in ct the only case where ct will show nothing uh, see even serial ct will be normal so here mri is important actually truly speaking it is packed mri right which is which should be done in this case to detect there will be uh, you know some uh, you know axons axons uh, will be seen at uh, you know spect mri okay in stroke of course you know that we will do nccet right in stroke we will do nccet within 4.5 hour we will do thrombolysis every point has been asked every point and in case of acute ischemic stroke you will see hyperdense mcs sign or sylvian dot sign how is hyperdense mcs sign something like this you will see a white line this is hyperdense mcs sign or sylvian dot sign you will see and if it is more than 6 hour you can do mechanical thrombectomy okay we will see, discuss it in medicine section then again there will be something you know like this this pattern this is called delta sign delta sign is seen in cvt cortical venous thrombosis right don't forget it's also important okay a few sites where we can expect calcification so one in pineal gland normally pineal gland choroid plexus fox cerebri basal anglia abernular commissure but the thing which is asked is like you know a picture is given like that Sorry, my picture is not that good right so i'm really bad at doing pictures anyway so consider it a brain right so a lateral view lateral view of the head of a child so the question is asked that here in a, there is a calcification in a uh, child and uh, which is creating such as problems what is the diagnosis so calcification in a child at the supracellular region supracellular calcification in a child suggests only one thing this is craniopharyngioma don't miss this guys craniopharyngioma correct so next next i will talk about yes uh, figure of eight appearance the figure of eight appearance is seen in see same picture if you in an elderly if you see in the cellar region there is a figure of eight shape it is pituitary macroadenoma of course the you will also see the scenarios that will suggest it but from radiology point of view just remember it like that and if you see something a mass like this you know a mass like this butterfly pattern necrosed right necrosed butterfly pattern this is nothing but butterfly glioma which is in a condition gbm gbm is glioblastoma multiforme which is a aggressive condition right then we will discuss about meningioma also important meningioma meningioma something like that this called mother-in-law sign mother-in-law sign means 
uh, once it uh, comes it is it doesn't go that easily you know once so <laughs> that's why it is been given a fancy name mother-in-law sign if there is a dural tail this point you remember has been asked dural tail extra axial extra axial senior females that's why mother-in-law sign 32 50 years there will be headache that's it is enough vestibular swanoma nf2 seen in nf2 right vestibular cochlear nerve is involved okay and there will be ice cream cone appearance ice cream cone appearance and inferior vestibular nerve is affected okay don't forget it's very important then in case of neurosis sarcosis what you will get you get a dot you know this is uh, you know eccentric collex in a ring right eccentric collex in a ring okay again in uh, the if you actually show something like that it's hair on end appearance hair on end appearance seen in thalassemia right hair on end appearance seen in thalassemia and then uh, something like this you will see okay so there is multiple punched out lytic lesion if such things are see this is multiple myeloma so or you can say it's a raindrop skull so if there is you know uh, mul multiple punched out if there is multiple punched out lytic lesion or if we, we can also say this as a raindrop skull it is seen in multiple myeloma correct of course there will be other histories you will see that in a uh, medicine right in case uh, the same history is there but in this case it is a child it may be a synophilic granuloma correct and then uh, there's something called uh, temo center skull or cotton wool skull these things are seen in pagets cotton wool skull you know how to show it I have to see uh, show it in this one only uh, radio pictures only and if you see something like that this is salt and pepper skull salt and pepper salt and pepper skull salt and pepper skull is seen in hyperparathyroidism salt and pepper skull is seen in hyperparathyroidism correct then there is you know uh, little picture even like something like this you know something hanging hanging out of the inferior orbital wall you know something hanging out of the inferior orbital wall this is tear drop sign tear drop sign and tear drop sign is seen in blowout fracture tear drop sign seen in blowout fracture correct then remember some signs guys right uh, batwing sign well batwing sign is like that in case of seen in pulmonary edema opacities right this type of opacities is seen between sign in pulmonary edema right now we'll uh, name some signs just remember it eye of tiger sign is seen in eye of tiger sign seen in heller burden's parts Face of panda in Wilson, right? Then hot cross bun sign has been repeated in multiple system atrophy, correct? Now we will see genitourinary radiology, correct? Genitourinary radiology. So, in case uh, of kidney stones, we are doing NCCT, correct? then staghorn calculi staghorn calculi mainly occur due to organism like proteus mirabilis urine will be alkaline and pyelonephritis may be associated okay and then putty kidney i will show you the images later putty kidney renal tree may be associated right 
then there will be uh, there may be something you know appearance of flower bus see uh, what i'm saying is about horseshoe shaped kidney so horseshoe shaped kidney you know if this is the vertebra it may appear that two kidneys are going and you know shaking hands with each other right like this so it is called flower bus appearance seen in or shaking hand appearance flower bus or shaking hand appearance in horseshoe kidney right then there will be in uh, in IBP there may be something like this you know from two ureter going downwards you know looking like an snake pattern right this is called adder head appearance it is seen in adder head appearance or cobra head appearance in in ureterosil ureterosil correct and then there may be keyhole appearance like this seen in posterior cell valve in males correct and then something like if you are you know the bladder may be visualized something like this in you know, small and narrow so it is called neurogenic bladder this is Christmas tree pattern correct and in PCKD holistic kidney disease there may be spider web appearance may be seen spider web appearance may be seen right okay now there is an important thing like uh, you know you may okay there are many organs actually i just uh, drew in a ct section of a kidney now i'm just uh, trying to show a schematic diagram here there will be some fats you know low density hyper and uh, you can drift easily right to, depending on the different type of density so th this will have a different density compared to the background is actually fat and we this we say this as angiomyolipoma of kidney right whenever you will see if some you know something like fat in the kidney which is different density from the background is actually angiomyolipoma of the kidney correct okay then something about fio see fio there is something 10 percent rule what we will see in surgery in between choice is important here mri and for extra adrenal because few may be adrenal may be extra adrenal for extra adrenal dopa pet is the investigation of choice Chalo, next now some musculoskeletal although we will see this in ortho as well right so just remember something known as murg what is this for Montagia fracture, analyze the fracture in case of Montagia. It's just mnemonics. For Galazi, radius is fractured. I will show you the radiology images in the other section, right? So, March fracture. Second, metatarsal shaft fracture. Okay, this is the March fracture. Chalo. Now see bone lesions is important. So when the bone lesions, I will discuss it in ortho in in our details. See when when the thing is uh, the lesion is in epiphysis, it will be either GCT or ABC. Both look same only. Uh, both look same. So bubble appearance. But GCT is when there will be uh, growth plates will be fused. There will be you know no visible growth plates. Like if this is the epiphysis. There is no growth plate visible, correct? And here it is soap bubble appearance, correct? Soap bubble appearance, like this, like this. And if the growth plate is visible, then it is aneurysmal bone cyst. Simple. Now we will talk about the metaphysis. As if something is in the metaphysis, this section, right? One second. Okay, something is in the this is part of the epiphysis, right? Something is the metaphysis. This is if it is malignant, it is osteosarcoma. And so many times image has been given, and we will find signs like Codman's triangle, okay? Uh, then uh, sunburst pattern. I will show you all, all this. And uh, history is very important. 
right it, uh, the swelling will be you know gradually uh, progressive right okay and in the meta metaphysis location and if it is in the diaphysis and some onion like pattern or limited pattern is having sarcoma having is in the diaphysis remember diaphysis means the shaft of the bone okay Chalo. now we will go to some spine radiologies the spine radiology is also important when something is given like this this is cobweb this uh, sorry cob angle this cob angle for scoliosis scoliosis for egyptian scoliosis right and going uh, and also if something in you know, a prevertebral soft tissue prevertebral soft tissue is enlarged it suggests uh, this one okay i will uh, discuss uh, neck radiology here as, as well head and neck radiology so we say this as retropharyngeal abscess one second guys yes now i will some sinus view okay see water's view is for maxillary sinus now important thing is you see remember in water's view mouth is closed this is what we you know make mistake water's view mouth is closed but in Piri's view, Piri's view, mouth is open. <clears throat> Water's view for maxillary, Piri's view, mouth is open means we can observe here sphenoid sinus as well. So Cardwell view is for frontal sinus, you know, where head is placed, you know, forehead is placed at an angle, right? And lateral view is for sphenoid sinus again okay yes, so i was uh, talking about that in the neck portion if prevertebral soft tissue is enlarged we say this is retropharyngeal abscess correct yes and again there is there is ngo fibroma so the history will be of a young patient with epistaxis with this alone you can diagnose the ng fibroma but again there is something known as anterior miller sign or anterior bowing of the posterior wall of maxillary sinus also known as holman miller sign anterior sign okay so with this two you can diagnose the ng fibroma but main thing is the history only right then fungal sinusitis or you can say as mucor in covid era is it is also important like sinus will be given okay so you will see see okay just imagine it so you will see the necrosis or injury invasion or the bones will be or the turbinates will be dark in color one will be hazy one will be uh, normal and one will be dark right and the black turbinates is all are is going towards fungal sinusitis or mucormycosis right and treatment is iv the uh, this one a uh, liposomal amphotericin Tick. all right don't forget it guys right and also in in normal cases what will you see that there are you know in fungal sinusitis double density sign there are different types of haziness different types of densities i will show you double density sign or hyperdense sinus okay okay also remember in covid you will see ground glass opacification or consolidation okay and just remember reverse as sign where you will see reverse as sign in right upper lobe right upper lobe collapse right secondary to bronchogenic carcinoma you will see reverse as sign silhote is also important guys silhote means when the you know the part of the heart overlies the our lungs so when a part of the heart just uh, you know covers those segment of the lungs this is the silhote sign just when i will give the example you will understand like silhote structure you know silhote structure and here is the continuing of the lung now you will understand like upper right heart border this has been asked everything is important right whatever i am discussing questions come less in the in you know radiology but 
topics are more and topics are important so you cannot miss upper right hard border so it is entire segment of right one second entire segment of right upper loop so upper right border silhouette structure and uh, the, the part that continues with the lung is the entire segment of the right upper loop i am continuing the table for right heart border is right middle loop for upper left heart border it is anterior left upper loop for left heart border it is lingula for aortic node knob it is apical left upper loop and they also remember pleural effusion pleural effusion there occurs blunting of costophrenic angle meniscus sign best view is lateral decubitus view best now pneumothorax hyperlucency will see see pneumothorax means completely black lungs right so there is hyperlucency no vascular marking deep sulcus sign just remember these three also remember tension pneumothorax it is seen in trauma patient there will be case scenario the patient is hypotensive right patient is hypotensive came okay like patient is hypotensive came in the emergency following an rda and you know uh, chest breaths are breath sounds are reduced this suggests to us tension pneumothorax remember x-ray is not necessary you should not do x-ray this is a clinical diagnosis right and once you diagnose is a tension pneumothorax breath sounds are reduced then you will do an intercostal uh, you know drainage at the fifth intercostal space in adults second intercostal space in children followed by uh, this is tube thoracostomy followed by intercostal drainage right this is tube thoracostomy right at fifth intercostal space in adults second intercostal space in children followed by intercostal drainage okay Chalo. this is important okay now <clears throat> yes also remember in pneumothorax in usg usg for normal lungs normal lungs just remember normal lungs will show seashore sign but pneumothorax will show barcode sign seashore means what c uh, there will be a beach type and there will be c okay c and shore means beach type okay this will uh, there will be beach and there will be a short type right in seashore or normal but in case of pneumothorax there will be barcode sign like this this there will be no seashore pattern okay Chalo. and now we'll talk about mediastinal mass see if i talk about entire mediastinal mass thymoma is the most common and posterior mediastinal mass neurogenic tumors most common right what about middle middle lymph node entire thymoma posterior neurogenic middle lymph node that's it correct in case of tb very important so we may see gons complex primary tb gons complex they will find hilar lymphoid lymphatics that's it in case of reactivation we will find cavitations but most important is miliary tb there what will you find smillets numerous millets we will find okay in both the lungs is miliary tb correct then another important is bronchiectasis the bronchiectasis in ct what we will see we see many things actually first we will see like uh, try to visualize what i have drawn okay first we will see cavities right next we can see signet ring shape next we can see thumb track sign next finger on glove pattern right everything i will summarize so in hrct we will see thumb track sign signet ring cluster of grapes hands on glove fingers on glove 
pavement appearance this all we will see okay then hydrated cyst what will you see floating water lily sign water lily sign pneumatocele staphylococcal pneumonia you know that abpa air crescent sign you will see air crescent sign is like that like this okay so this abpa air crescent sign apa is angio uh, invasive bronchopulmonary aspergillosis okay also remember for all lung tumor staging our investigation choice is c ct or pet ct mostly we know that except one pen coast for pen coast it is mri don't forget right pulmonary embolism i have already shown you okay and yes there are few cvs abnormalities these are asked one is figure of eight cardiovascular uh, appearances figure of eight for tapbc tapbc is total anomalous pulmonary venous connection tapbc figure of eight another figure of eight we show we saw in pituitary macrodenoma right then there is heart remains in box shaped is abstain's anomaly abstain anomaly okay then there is something like this boot shaped heart this is fellow tetralogy four things are seen vsd rvh okay ps and pulmonary stenosis ventral septal defect right ventral hypertrophy this one is for rvh this apex okay now then there is egg on string appearance For TGV, transposition of GAD vessels. To get transposition of GAD vessels, right? And uh, for any MI or anything, gold standard investigation will be coronary catheter angiography. Gold standard is always invasive. Just remember. Okay. For hibernating myocardium, it is FDG PET is the investigation. Okay, so next. Now I will show. I will uh, tell you something about abdominal radiology, right? So abdominal barium C barium. There is many things. First, there is swallow. Swallow is for esophagus mainly. Meal is for stomach and bladder visualization. Sorry, stomach and duodenum visualization. The swallow is for esophagus part and for uh, stomach and duodenum. Uh, Duodenum it is meal and follow through is for bowel. Follow through for bowel. Edema is for large bowel. Okay, remember this. Swallow esophagus, meal, stomach, duodenum, follow through, small bowel, enema, large bowel. Okay. So now uh, I will say something about the duplex ureter. See, uh, duplex ureter means in at one side there is two ureter, one side there is one ureter. Okay, now um, this is you know double ureter on one side, so one of them becomes the ectopic ureter, right? So remember some rules in duplex ureter is very important topic. So first is we will see drooping lily sign. See, drooping lily sign, drooping lily sign, and also remember simo. Simo is the Wigert Mears rule. Wigert Mears rule. Simo means the superior ureter will insert inferomedially. And the inferior ureter, superior in, uh, ureter will insert inferomedially and will cause the obstruction. So, superior one is the ectopic one, and the inferior one is the normal one. Just remember this point. This will help uh, in you know solving the questions. It's very important concept. Duplex ureter, two ureter one side, drooping lily sign. Simo is the Wigert Mears rule, where the superior ureter is the ectopic one and opens inferomedially, and the inferior is the normal one. So the patient will complain that his child is having. So the patient, this child will be having a normal ureter as well as dribbling of urine, both, because one ureter is normal, the inferior one, superior one is abnormal, which is the ectopic one. 
and it uh, opens inferomedially and is resulting obstruction superior ureter inferomedial obstruction okay? now i will discuss some miscellaneous topics miscellaneous so so talk, let's talk about covid this is important so covid there is a score known as correct score till now nothing is asked so let's leave it and of course we will see something that is important we will see ground glass opacification it is all in hrct right consolidation opacities pavement appearance reverse halo sign is important reverse halo sign so next now one image is there like this see this is posterior diverticulum okay posterior diverticulum mainly zinc cuts if it had been anterior diverticulum it should have been kilians so anterior diverticulum is kilians posterior diverticulum is zinc cuts remember it posterior zinc cuts anterior kilians then there is something like this it has been asked is diffuse esophageal spasm cox q appearance cox q appearance diffuse esophageal spasm okay then an important topic congenital diaphragmatic hernia so actually in the thorax this is the thorax level right so you will see parts of intestine here in the thorax okay, in thorax you will see part of intestine this congenital diaphragmatic hernia most common is left postero lateral bosdalek hernia <coughs> bosdalek right then there is single bubble sign or there may be double bubble sign single bubble is seen in congenital hypertrophic pyloric stenosis most important topic so there i will uh, and double bubble is duodenal atresia there is triple bubble also triple bubble is jejunal atresia it is triple bubble never asked jejunal atresia triple bubble never asked double atresia means stomach and duodenum okay it is duodenal atresia and treatment is duodeno duodenectomy and congenital hypertrophic pyloric stenosis is single bubble here there is a projectile vomiting correct and uh, in best known choice is usg usg and thickness of muscle wall more than 3 mm and there are other signs like string sign mushroom sign caterpillar sign target sign everything is there and rest we will discuss at pedia and treatment is congenital hypertrophic pyloric stenosis treatment ramsters pylor uh, ramsters Pyloro myotomy. Okay. Shall we next? Um yes. Yes. Double level seen in duodenal atresia also seen in annular pancreas. Okay, just remember it. Okay. Mm. Now there is something known as this is a diaphragm. There is this is air under diaphragm. Air under diaphragm is pneumoperitoneum. See this kind of the choice, correct? Okay. Bowel of we have already discussed then often there is you know thumb print sign in the abdomen thumb print sign thumb print sign easy to ischemic colitis or any pseudomembranous colitis correct and in barium often you will see coiled spring appearance and history will give that there is you know uh, bleeding pv Oh, sorry bleeding per rectum right bleeding per rectum bleeding pr in case of child right bleeding pr in a child and barium showing this one coiled spring appearance so other signs are there like meniscus sign in xa usg target sign dog nut sign pseudo kidney sign barium minima close sign pincer sign it's all suggest intersusception all right so next and then you can see in barium minima something like this sawtooth appearance in barium minima this sawtooth this is colonic diverticulosis. So in diverticulosis, so to the appearance. Then you can see something like this. Apple core appearance in colon. This colonic carcinoma. Apple core appearance. Hello. Next you can see some volvulus, right? Volvulus like thing. Coffee bean appearance. This is the two sigmoid volvulus. Coffee bean type pattern, right? Sigmoid volvulus. Then you can see. One second. Yes. 
next you can see uh, some huge dilated colon mega colon and colonic egg, egg ganglionosis colonic egg ganglionosis in rectal biopsy rectal biopsy is the investigation right Hirschsprung's disease is the diagnosis in bisnotrosis has been asked rectal biopsy next uh, next what we will discuss i think we have taken majority of the, these things um yes if i say lung abscess lung abscess is going to easily detect because there will be uh, things like that fluid and air right fluid in the bottom section so this is lung abscess in the lungs you will see that right so pulmonary thromboembolism we have discussed yes so okay Mm -hmm. I'm looking for the points I missed. Okay. Yes. So there is a picture like uh, this is a brain, right? So there is a picture like this one. Dawson's. This is called Dawson's finger in multiple sclerosis. It is seen. Dawson's finger. Okay. Chalo. Next. Uh, have I missed anything? Hmm. okay okay so there is a vertebral pattern which i should have told in this one spine radiology you can add uh, so in the vertebra this is about the pedicles right here two pedicles visible but here one here again two so here one pedicle is missing this is called winking owl sign Wink owl sign is seen in vertebral metastasis. One such. Okay. Wink owl sign in vertebral metastasis. Again, if this is the vertebra, okay. Then this is the uh, on viewing from the top, it appears something like that. And on the side, it will appear state set thing. Okay. On the top, like this. Right? So this is, you know, jailhouse. This is a jail pattern, right? Jailhouse. And this is some dot pattern, polka dot. So polka dot and jailhouse is in vertebral hemangioma. Vertebral hemangioma, correct? Okay, so with this, I think I've discussed uh, majority of the things. Nothing is left as I'm uh, seeing. So two things I will discuss before I wrap up the session. And also I'll show you a few images. So one is pulmonary edema. So while pulmonary edema will determine what is if it is cardiogenic or it is non-cardiogenic, correct? So in cardiogenic heart heart size will be enlarged here heart is normal here pcwp pulmonary capillary wedge pressure will be increased here it is normal fluid effusion is seen here here not seen here no air bronchogram here is air bronchogram is seen so what i said heart is size increased in cardiogenic pcwp increased fluid effusion is seen no air bronchogram this reverse in the non-cardiogenic often asked you know often it will help in differentiating then in ards ARDS, as I already mentioned, there will be bad wing opacities in both sides of the lung, something like that, correct? Bad wing opacities, hilar involvement, right? Okay, and I will talk about right middle cerebral artery infarct. So, in this, see, there will be wet shepherd pattern. So first is we'll find a wedge shaped area, hypodensity, mass effect, right? Mass effect for, for this, and there is a loss of gray white matter distribution. So gray white matter distribution loss. Just just remember these four points, right? <clears throat> mm, okay. With this, I will uh, close this session. I I think I have taken majority of the you know points, and if you guys think that I need to discuss some something more or something i've missed leave it in the comment box and very soon i'll be taking one uh, small session and i will show you some images and if you're interested i will take the remaining images as well right so okay thank you take care see you again